Are you tired of the media drama queens and their fake news? Well, if you are, I suggest that you ignore the talking heads and instead focus on the data. And specifically, what I'm referring to is to watch the stock market and other financial economic indicators. Let me give you an example. A year ago, the media was all abuzz about nuclear war with North Korea. No matter what you turn to, the threat of a nuclear war with North Korea was hoisted upon you. But at that very same time, if you were paying attention to the South Korean stock market, you would see that it was going on and making all-time record highs. And so you have to ask yourself, why would the South Korean stock market be going up so much if in fact it were true that Seoul, Korea, if not annihilated by nuclear arms, they would at least be bombarded with artillery? Well, there was obviously a disconnect there, and the propaganda fake news was wrong. The market told you there wouldn't be a conflict with North Korea. Now let's fast forward to today. For most of this year, what have you been hearing about the trade war with China? For the most part, the headlines have talked about how China can win this trade war, or how a trade war doesn't have any winners, and how, if nothing else, the U.S. was going to suffer. But what's Mr. Market telling you? Well, take a look at the U.S. stock market, and you can see that it's back to all-time record highs. But the same thing can't be said for China. The Chinese market has made lower highs and lower lows. So what does that tell you about who's winning the trade war? Ah, huh, but don't get me wrong, I'm not discounting the Chinese. I know that they are smart people, and they know how to play the game. Take a look at the Chinese market over more than a decade. It hasn't yet fully recovered from the 2008 financial crisis, but it has been building a base since 2010, and I believe that once the trade war fears have been alleviated, the Chinese market will not only break out, but it will go on and surpass the highs that it made in 2007. I think the overall global market has more room to run, and that's why I remain invested in China, in emerging markets, and in the United States. Am I right or wrong? Well, I don't know. You'll just have to come back for future episodes of the Wellsteading Podcast. Until then, as always, this is John Pagliano wishing you the very best returns.